Mike Dilger loves wildlife. He's spent over 40 years seeking out some of the most exciting species the world has to offer. But today we're asking him to cast his eagle eye over three bits of tech, all designed to get us back in touch with our wild side. And first up, it's me. So, Mike, you must be familiar with one of these. Do you know what it is? It's a trail camera. That <laughs> looks state-of-the-art. I'm pleased you say that straight off the cuff, because it is state-of-the-art. Trail cams boost the chances of recording wildlife because they're triggered by motion. While the technology has been used by wildlife fans for a while, this new Browning Recon model is one of the first on the market with native 4K video. It also takes 32 megapixel stills, and for all that ultra-high-def footage, it supports SD cards up to a huge 512 gig. Right, let's set it up, shall we? OK, what is brilliant is that we open this little trap door and you've got a two-inch coloured screen there. Well, does that mean you can look at the footage you might have caught before you have to take the memory card out and go to your computer? Exactly. You can see what's already stored there and, more importantly, you can check that you're getting the right shot that you're after. That looks lovely. You've got a nice wide vista, ready for anything to turn up. A heron to come and eat these fish, a fox or a badger for a drink, even a frog to come down to lay some frog spawn. As well as 4K video, the Browning has a time-lapse mode. And that's not all. So we're currently shooting in 30 frames per second. It can actually go up to 60 frames per second in ultra mode. That's great, because if the wildlife is quite speedy past camera, you get more bang for your buck. It also has a low-glow infrared sensor for capturing high-quality footage after dark, and a smart video mode, which reduces memory and battery use by automatically stopping recordings when an animal, such as this rare species, has gone out of range. The great thing about using these as well, of course, is that people have no idea what's coming to their garden. They say, I've got nothing in my garden. You put one of these in, and all of a sudden they go, I've got a badger, I've got a deer, I've got a fox. <laughs> and by knowing what comes into their back garden, they can actually manage their garden more sympathetically for the wildlife they share it with, which is a win-win situation. Well, Georgie, it's one thing to be able to spy on the marvellous creatures that rummage through your garden, but my bit of tech will help you find out what they're called. This looks like a splendid garden full of trees to find lots of birds, and I've got just the app to help me identify them. Well, there's a lovely tree line just behind you over there, oh. John, and I can see some birds, so it'll be interesting to see if your app can correctly identify oh. them. Let's get a bit close up. The Merlin Bird ID is made by the fully-fledged boffins at Cornell University, no less, and claims to be able to identify over 7,500 species. I mean, the app works in various different ways. You can actually just go through a series of questions and answer those, it'll come up with some suggestions. Or you can also take a snap of the bird with your phone's camera. I've got hundreds of very bad pictures here. So... <laughs> <laughs> And the app's AI does the hard work for you, suggesting an identification. Golden Eagle. Oh, <laughs> I <laughs> wish it was a Golden Eagle. Yeah, I say, yes. Sadly, it would take all the AI in the world to identify a rook from these digitally zoomed and pixelated pictures. It's not really identifying these rooks very well, is it? Fortunately, I did take a picture out of my kitchen window yesterday. And let's take that one. So you zoom into the bird, do you? Zoom into the bird. I know what that bird is. And then go next, identify. And we have a Eurasian collared dove. That is correct, <laughs> 100%. Once you've put a name to your bird, you can enjoy a wealth of info within the app from Merlin's Field Guide, including range maps, professional pictures, and a library of over 29,000 bird calls. Indeed, what a comforting ooh, sound. Ooh, 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 ooh. Perfect. Brilliant, particularly for beginners. I'd say we've saved the best till last, because I'm up next with some tech to help you see at night. I have this. It is the Fleur One Gen 3 thermal imaging camera. Once only found inside expensive, bulky cameras, this thermal shooter plugs straight into your phone via USB-C or lightning. It has two lenses, 
combining infrared shots from one with conventional snaps from the other for a detailed thermal image. A lot of the mammals that are warm-blooded that come into people's gardens, they're either nocturnal, yep. they come out at night, or they're what's called crepuscular, so they're dawn and dusk, a bit like now. I'd be fascinated to try this, Otis, because when birds are perching or roosting at night, you can never see them. So wood pigeons hunkered on a branch or even tawny owls tucked against the trunk. Yeah. But this has great potential for someone like me who wants to find wildlife in all weathers and all conditions, day and night. Well, time to find out if that potential can be realised. Over the next few days, Mike took all three bits of tech home to test them out without us lot scaring away all the animals. I was really impressed with the Browning trail cam. First up, the uh, trigger is excellent. We caught a fox moving really quickly, so that trigger is key. The infrared uh, lights produce a nice diffuse lighting. The Merlin Bird app is a really powerful tool. One great thing I found from this is you can photograph birds on television programs that you don't know the name of and then look and it will identify them. So I was photographing hummingbirds on a TV and was able to identify the bird. So that for me is amazing. Now the Fleur One has a fundamental flaw. It picks up the heat signature from three to four meters away without a problem. That's its optimum working distance. But very rarely can you get close enough to the wildlife. So I took it out down the bottom of my garden and couldn't find anything at all because it couldn't pick it up. Looks like it's between me and you, John, but which is best to get amateur wildlife enthusiasts in touch with nature? I have to say, that really is absolutely superb.